Hey, what's up YouTube? Once again, welcome back to Sam's Creative Toolbox. Yeah, like always, my name is Sam. You can also find me here on Facebook. And today I'm going to show you how to do a very basic color correction and then the color grading in Adobe After Effects. Before we start though, I want to give you some more information about both terms because I often see that people use these terms in the wrong way. So they speak about the correction, mean the grading, or speak about color grading but mean color correction. Usually color correction comes before the actual grading. It's all about technical stuff like correct white balance, right exposure, removing color tints, removing noise and all that stuff to get a very perfectly neutral image. And after that comes the grading. It's a lot about creativity. It's yeah about finding the right colors which maybe enhance a different atmosphere or mood in your image. And yeah, without wasting more time, let's meet in After Effects and have some fun. Okay guys, once again, welcome back to After Effects. Before I always start my color correction, what I do is always uh, sit back in my chair and take a look at my footage. Yeah, to just see if there's anything wrong, like the exposure is uh, yeah, too high, too low, or uh, the white balance is off. So all these things. For that step, it may be great if you have at least a quite decent monitor or screen, which is also maybe calibrated, because otherwise you don't have a guarantee that your color correction is, yeah, is 100% correct. For the color correction, there are many, many different ways in After Effects. But there's one effect I use all the time, it's called color balance. Uh, when I work on grading or color correction, I always apply the effects to an independent layer. Because that gives me the full control about each layer, about the opacity, about the blend modes right here. And yeah, like I said, it's just better for me to control the whole, um, my whole setup. So just create a new adjustment layer and rename it for example CC or just color correction, whatever you want. Then go to your effects and presets panel on the right side and type in color balance and apply this effect to our adjustment layer. The first thing you should do is now check the preserve luminosity to get the correct brightness and contrast values. And if you now take a look at this effect, you have RGB, red, green and blue and shadows, midtones and highlights. It's basically the same as a curve or a levels effect. But I like this more because it gives me a little bit better control because I can type in very specific values. The theory behind these uh, effects is called complementary colors. I will show you a great site for that. It's called color.adobe.com. On this page you have a lot of information about color and here like I said we have complementary. Complementary colors, just some short information about that are colors which are at the opposite direction of the color wheel. So for yellow it's blue, for green it's red and so on. So if you now go back to After Effects and take a look at my image, I maybe think that I have some slight yellowish reddish tints in the midtones and maybe in the highlights. So once again go back to adobe.com or color.adobe.com and take a look at the color wheel. And yeah, what we see is that for yellow, the complementary color is blue or yeah, something in the cyan area. So what I want to do then is go to the midtones for the blue. And if you now increase that value, you see the image gets a lot more bluish. And if you bring it to the negative side, the image gets yellow. And like I said, if you want to remove yellow, just add blue. So I will type in something around plus 5 for example. Then go to the highlight blue balance, maybe type in 3. Uh, like I said, this image has an almost perfect white balance. It's just some very, very slight changes. And also maybe go to the red balance, pull that to the negative side to add some uh, cyan. And also the same for highlight red balance. Okay, if you now take a look at the before and after, you don't see much difference. It's just, like I said, some slight color changes especially in the skin tones they don't look as yellow as before okay so now after the color correction is done let's start with the grading for that i will also create a new adjustment layer in this case call it tritone and apply an effect which yeah, has exactly the same name so also tritone 
and apply this effect to our adjustment layer. This effect is great as a first step because you can uh, change the colors for highlights, midtones and shadows. Before we now start creating, it's time again to sit back and think about which colors you want to choose for your final look. So once again, go back to color.adobe.com and just uh, see which colors may uh, look good together. By the way, complementary colors are chosen because they have the best color contrast, so they always look great with each other. So the look I'm now going for is the famous, let's call it blockbuster look. It's blue cyan colors in the shadows and mids and some orange yellow tones for the skin. So let's go back to After Effects and change the highlights to, like I said, a kind of yellowish color tone. So maybe, maybe something like that. So color is like sand maybe. Then go to Midtones, change the color to something around the bluish cyan um, area. And then for shadows, I will choose a color which is almost black, so just a very, very dark blue. Okay. The fourth option, which comes with the tritone effect, is called Blend with Original. This effect is set by default to 0%, which means that this effect is affecting this image 100%. And if you now bring that up to 100, you see that the image now uh, is... Yeah, as before, so this, this effect doesn't affect the image at all. I usually leave my uh, value at zero so that the effect is 100% visible. And instead of changing that value, I will go now to blend mode and for example choose color or in this case maybe soft light. What soft light does, it, um, yeah, as you can see, it boosts the contrast and also adds the color that I chose. And also now let's select layer because I find that effect too harsh. So hit T for opacity and change that to, for example, let's say 45. Then hit U to close the settings. And now it's time to add even more colors. So right click, new adjustment layer again. And now name that CG for color grade or yeah, basically any name you want. Then like always go to our effects and presets panel and type in curves. Of course, there are also many, many different ways on how to achieve color looks. I like the curves effect. I also use that a lot for my photos in Photoshop. Um, you can also use, of course, levels and some other options. Of course, again, color balance, whatever you like. The cool thing about curves is not only that you can use it to add contrast, like um, standard S-curve. You can also change or choose the different channels for red, green and blue. And also, if you click on one of these buttons right here, the curves becomes bigger and give you a better control about yeah, the fine-tuning here in the corners. So next, let's go to the red section, the red channel. And if you now bring the bottom left uh, point right here to the right side, you can see we start to add a lot uh, of blue and cyan color. And if you move it up, we add red. Once again, the reason behind that is always the same theory. It's about complementary colors, so for red, it's always cyan. Okay, so in my case, like I said, I want that Hollywood look, so let's bring it to the right side to add some cyan color and maybe add the highlight uh, point here to the left to add a little bit of red in the highlights. Then go to channel and choose blue. And in this case now, I want to add some blue, so let's bring that curve up. So maybe somewhere around here. And then also bring the top right point down to add a little bit of yellow to the highlights. Okay, so once again, here's the before and here's the after. Of course, now this effect looks uh, way too, let's say, cheap. It looks like it just applied a cheap preset on this uh, movie. The main reason for that is that the skin tones doesn't or don't look natural anymore. If you watch Hollywood movies, they of course have the bluish tint in the shadows, but the skin tones always uh, tend to look a lot more neutral, a lot more real. For that, there are many, many different options. One option is to use a color key to uh, use it as a luma mat for your skin tones. For that, let's select our footage layer, then go to Edit and Duplicate or hit Ctrl D as a shortcut. Then take that layer to the top and hit Ctrl D once again. Then hit Enter to rename the first layer into Luma Matte. 
and the second layer here in skin or skin tones. This step is usually called a secondary color correction. Like I said, it's used to bring back some, uh, yeah, some of the skin tones. The next effect you want to apply is called key light. This effect is usually used to yeah, remove the green or blue color from a green or blue screen. But now I want to show you a very cool different um, way and how you can use this cool effect. The first thing you want to do with this effect is take the color picker or also called screen color and choose a nice solid skin tone, maybe around the cheek right here. Okay, then after that go to view and change the blend mode to um, screen matte. Like I said, I want to use this layer as a luma mat, and luma mats uh, consist of basically just black and white. So what I want to do now is I try my best to get the skin tones as black as possible, and anything which is not the skin tone should be 100% white. So I don't want to have any grays, I always want to have just black and white. For that you have many different options, under screen gain for example, you can boost that value to around 120 for example. And after that, also increase the screen pre-blur here to yeah, just feather out these edges. So I will choose a value of, let's say, 15 for example. Okay, and then open up the screen mat. And here you have two very important um, sliders. The first one is called clip black, and the second one is called clip white. If you bring the clip black value up, the image will get darker, and if you bring the clip white value down, the image, especially the gray values, will get whiter and whiter. So for this image, I choose a value, for example, around 20 for the blacks and 50 for the whites. Of course, these values are only for my footage. If you have your own footage, then please just play around with these values to get the perfect skin tone separation. Then after that, let's go back to our skin tone layer and choose track mat inverted or luma inverted mat. By the way guys, like always, if you can't see this menu, just click toggle switch modes to switch between the 3D menu and the blend mode track mat menu. And yeah, as you now see, we have perfectly neutral skin tones. Of course, this effect is now way too obvious, so the first thing I want to do is make these, let's zoom in a bit, make these edges right here a little bit smoother. So let's apply an effect which is called Gaussian Blur and apply this effect yeah, to our luma mat again. Then just increase the blurriness to around, let's say, 30 or 40. And now you see that the edges uh, are a lot smoother than before. Then go to your skin tone layer. And like I said, this effect for me is way too obvious. It doesn't look uh, yeah, realistic anymore. So hit T for opacity and bring that down, for example, to around 55. And yeah, as you can see, the effect now isn't as visible as before, or not as obvious as before. So once again, here's the before and after, and as you can see, the skin tones start to look a lot more neutral, a lot more realistic. Okay. The last step I do after finishing my color grade is to add a little bit of contrast. There are also many different ways, for example, add a curves adjustment layer or a levels adjustment layer. But I will show you a very cool effect, which is often called the bleach bypass. So let's select this uh, bottom footage layer again, hit Ctrl D, bring that all the way to the top. Sorry. Bring that all the way to the top. Then apply an effect which is called black and white. Of course, as plan B, you could also select hue and saturation and bring the saturation all the way down to negative 100. The, re um, the end result should always be a black and white image. And then just choose blend mode and soft light. And as you can see, now we have a super harsh uh, bleach bypass contrasty look. Of course, like always, this is way too harsh for me. So let's hit T for opacity again and bring that again down to, for example, 50. Of course, that's all about your personal taste. If you love these uh, super harsh contrast situations, hey, then leave it at 100%. You could also change the blend mode, for example, to overlay to get an even more um, yeah, contrasty look. And last but not least, I will always sharpen my footage. So let's create a new adjustment layer again and call that one sharpen. Then apply an effect which is called unsharp mask. Okay. 
and for the amount I will choose a value of about 200 and the radius comma uh, 2. This is a very very subtle and very decent sharpening. Um, I always try to not over sharpen my image or my footage. Of course there are also many different other settings like amount 100, radius comma 8 for um, a more visible sharpening. But like I said I always like to keep my um, changes quite decent. And yeah guys that's basically all you can do to create a cool movie look in After Effects. The last step may be to import a leather box um, template and just drag that on top of our footage to get those black bars. And yeah, if you now take a look at the before and after image, I think that our footage now looks way more cinematic than before. Of course, with the techniques I showed you in the video, there are also other uh, possibilities to create different looks. So example number one is the same as before, just this bluish yellowish blockbuster look. Of course, you can also create something like the matrix, so something in the greener area and also some, yeah, some summer look which consists of very warmish brownish colors. Okay guys, I guess now you know how to do your color correction and grading yeah, in Adobe After Effects. Like always, if you find my videos helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, check out my Facebook page or Instagram and yeah, like always, stay creative and have fun.